Now, do you really care whether a hop bifurcation is supercritical or subcritical? Yes. Yes, you do. And it's not easy to tell. But there is a criterion. That's the good news. And it's a pretty good criterion. The bad news is it's a little bit messy. So stick with me on this one. Here's the process, or at least one process, for determining whether a Hopf bifurcation is supercritical or subcritical. Step one, at the bifurcation point, put the system into a particular form. I'm going to center it so that the origin is right at the bifurcation point, and I'm gonna rewrite my system as the derivative of x and y, is what? I'm going to split off the linear part, and I've got the matrix 0, omega, minus omega, 0, times x, y, and then I've got the nonlinear terms, and I'm going to pack those into two functions, f of x and y, and g of x and y. Now, I want those to be of order quadratic and higher. I want all the higher order terms packed into that. Now, these higher order terms, the f, the g, that's what's going to determine supercritical versus subcritical. Okay, next step is we start computing partial derivatives of f and g and evaluating them at the origin. So the notation that we're going to use is a subscript notation. So if I write f subscript xx, what that really means is the second partial of f with respect to the x variable, again, evaluated at the bifurcation point, at the origin. If I write g x x y, that means you take the third partial derivative of g, doing two partials in x, one partial in y, evaluated at the origin. Of course, as always, the order doesn't matter, assuming that f and g are sufficiently smooth, which of course we have to assume. Now, here's the hard part. Compute the following combination of partial derivatives. I'm going to take f x x x plus f x y y plus g x x y plus g y y y. I'm, I'm computing a whole bunch of third derivatives here, but I'm not done. Then, what I want you to do is take 1 over omega, remember omega is from the linear part, times the following quantity, fxy times quantity fxx plus fyy, minus gxy times quantity gxx plus gyy, minus fxx gyy plus fyy gxx. That is some big conglomeration of second derivatives. You add that to the third derivatives that we computed before, and you get what? You get, uh, you get a number. You get a number. All of these partial derivatives are evaluated at the bifurcation point. And last step, if this number is negative, you've got a supercritical hop bifurcation. If this number is positive, it's subcritical. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. What, what is that? Do I have to memorize that? No. No, you don't. Now, this is not a pretty formula, but it is pretty effective. If we think about the normal form in radial components, dr dt is mu r plus c r cubed. Everything, everything depends on that constant c. And this is how you compute the c. The proof that that criterion works is a highly unpleasant Taylor expansion that is meant to figure out the sign of this constant c. Now, how bad is this in practice? Well, it depends. I don't recommend trying to get this to work on the chemical oscillator problem that we just did. That's a little messy. Here's an example where it's a bit cleaner. Consider the following second-order nonlinear differential equation d squared x dt squared plus mu times dx dt plus x minus x squared dx dt plus x cubed equals zero. Now we're going to analyze this just as usual. We're going to let y be the derivative dx dt, and then I'm going to look at the first order system on the vector x and y. The derivative of x is y, of course. The derivative of y is the second derivative of x, which is minus x minus mu times y plus x squared y 
minus x cubed. If I rip out the linear portion, then at the bifurcation point, everything is great. My matrix is 0, 1, negative 1, negative mu. And at the bifurcation point, mu is 0, so I have 0, 1, negative 1, 0. Cool. That works out great. And I've moved off the nonlinear terms to the right, but these are very simple. F is 0. G is x squared y minus x cubed. And because G is a cubic polynomial, all of the second derivatives vanish at the origin. And the only third derivatives that I have to compute for that criterion are g x x y, which is 2, and g y y y, which is 0. That means that our criterion gives us a number of 2. 2 is positive, that's it. Subcritical hop bifurcation happening at the origin. That was not so bad.